Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically comparing it to the OcuSync Air system and Goggles Race Edition that DJI released last year. Now there are some differences between these systems you have to be aware of and depending on your application you may actually want to consider choosing the old system over the new one especially if you're a fixed wing user. So what we're going to do in this video is compare the two, give you some specific on the differences between them as well as give you my recommendation on which one you should go for. Now there are links to both of these products in the description of this video so if you would like to support the channel please do check them out. Looking at the goggles first of all it's hard not to notice that the digital goggles have had a complete design overhaul. The original RE goggles were based on the design of the white ones that DJI released alongside the Mavic Pro. Some differences between them are that the goggles RE do have a built-in battery in the headband whereas the digital FPV goggles do not and you have to use an external LiPo. The goggles RE weigh just over a thousand grams and have dual screens giving a total 1080p combined output. It has three receivers built in allowing you to use it with your DJI aircraft such as the Mavic 2 and the Mavic Pro. It has an analog FPV receiver in there for normal analog signals as well as being able to receive the signals from the OcuSync Air system. It does have a built-in DVR for recording and it uses both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. Another feature on the RE is that they do have a built-in gyro for head tracking as well as has a analog RC input to allow you to connect your remote to pass the signal over OcuSync. Comparing the RE to the new digital goggles, there are some large differences. For starters, these use dual two-inch screens giving a total resolution of 1440 by 810 and weigh just 415 grams. However, there is no built-in battery. These goggles are also not compatible with any of the DJI aircraft and they are not compatible with analog FPV either. However, there is an analog composite video input, but there is no built-in analog tuner. It does still have a built-in DVR for screen recording and this system only uses the 5 gigahertz band. There is no head tracking built into these new goggles as far as we know and there is no RC input because it is compatible with the new DJI digital remote which we'll look at after. Looking at the RE goggles from the back, one of the big features has always been this headband which includes the antennas and built-in battery. Now if you compare that to the new digital goggles, you can see how they are substantially lighter because you don't have all that bulk on the back and it simply uses this head strap system to hold them on. Because there's no battery in the digital goggles, you need to use an external LiPo and it has a standard DC input jack where it will take a 2 to 4S power band. Looking at the mask area of the goggles, you can see that there are some differences between them. You can see that the lenses are very similar in overall design with the RE having the sensor above it to turn the display off when you flip them up. That is gone on the new digitals, but you now have some vents along the top that allow airflow to get in to help prevent fogging. Both goggles have adjustments for the lens with the RE having a single knob on the bottom for both, whereas the digitals have individual ones on either side underneath. On the goggles RE you had a touchpad on the side which allowed you to swipe through the menus and change the settings, whereas on the new digital FPV goggles they've included a small 5-way joystick as well as a back button and a record button for the DVR. On the side of the new goggles you have the channel selection adjustments as well as a small LED output to show people what channel you're assigned to. Now as both have built-in DVRs you have a micro SD slot on the new goggles as well as a Type-C USB for updating the firmware. On the RE you have a micro SD card, the headphone socket as well as a HDMI input. The new digital goggles do not have HDMI, it is simply the digital system or analog composite video. Overall the new goggles have been designed specifically for FPV racing. Smaller, lighter, with replaceable antennas, no HDMI input and no compatibility with the DJI aircraft. Because there's also no head tracking it means that they're not always going to be the ideal solution for fixed wing or long range FPV flyers either. 
Next, we're going to take a look at the digital ear ends. Now, both of these are based on OcuSync and handle both video as well as control link if you choose to use it. Now, something to be aware of is these systems come with their own cameras and they are not compatible with external ones. There is no HDMI input and you cannot use a standard analog FPV camera. You have to use the one that has been included. Looking at the cameras, the OcuSync Ear system uses a quarter inch 1.2 megapixel sensor with a 2.65 millimeter lens. It has a global shutter and an ISO to 100 to 3200 with 148 degrees field of view. Looking at the camera on the new FPV system, it again is a quarter inch sensor, but this time it's been upgraded to four megapixel. It uses a 2.1 millimeter lens, f2.1, and now has a rolling shutter. ISO is between 100 and 25,600, and it has a 50 degree field of view. And as I mentioned, this one is now hardwired via an internal connector. Looking at the sides, you'll see that there are various mounting options on both cameras, with the original ones having three mounting posts, but the new DJI just having two because it's smaller. Something worth noting that while both cameras are replaceable, the original OcuSync one used a custom USB-C connector that plugged into the ear unit, whereas the new digital FPV system is hardwired. However, the camera is still replaceable. The connection is simply inside, hidden under a flap, where you can remove it, disconnect the camera, and replace either the camera or the cable on its own should you need to. It's also worth noting that the cable is also shorter on the new digital FPV system as well at just 100mm. However, because the cable is replaceable, we are hoping DJI make a longer one available in the future. Connector-wise, on the new digital FPV system, you simply have a single connection on the back which handles your telemetry, power and RC input. Both units use MMCX antenna connectors and these are the small ones that simply push in and lock in place. Comparing the size of the two units you can see that the new digital FPV system is much shorter and it is smaller overall. However it is a little bit taller when you compare them side by side. Weight-wise, the original ear unit on the left was 61.9 grams and the new one does weigh less at 45 grams. Size-wise, the original was 72 times 33 by 14 and the new one is 44 by 37 by 14. So overall, the new ear unit is quite a bit smaller and lighter. Both ear units have DVR recording on board as well, with the original OcuSync recording up to 720p with no audio, whereas the new system will record up to 1080p with audio, allowing you to replace your onboard camera should you not be needing a higher resolution. Both units support SBUS, however the new DJI digital system also has something called DJI HDL, which is their new 7 millisecond fast control output. Telemetry wise, the original OcuSync Air unit was compatible with MSP as well as Mavlink, which meant it would work with Betafly, iNav, as well as Ardra Pilot and a Pixhawk as well. However, the new Air system only supports UR and MSP, which means it's only going to be compatible with that type of flight controller, which is Betaflight and iNav again, but it won't currently support a Pixhawk or Ardra Pilot. Looking at connectivity, there is a USB-C port on the new system for upgrading the firmware. However, there is no head tracking output. Unlike on the original OcuSync where you had the PPM on the side, there is nothing because there is no head tracking feature on this new version. Quickly, looking at the antennas, as I've said, it still uses MMCX and you can see on the right hand side the new smaller antenna for the digital FPV system because it is only using 5 GHz, whereas on the original OcuSync they supplied three different types depending on your application. Talking about video quality via the live feed, the original OcuSync system could do either 960p at 50 frames a second down to 70 milliseconds, and that could go down to 480p 50 frames a second at 50 milliseconds. If we compare that to the new digital FPV system, which is capable of 720p 120 frames a second, 
down to 28 milliseconds. So the latency has been substantially reduced. They also have a HQ mode, which does 720p 60 frames a second on the ear system, which gets it to 40 milliseconds as well. Now, if we compare the two side by side, the RE system would do 720p 60 at 60 milliseconds. Compare that to 720p 120 at 28 milliseconds. So the new digital FPV system has substantially reduced that overall latency. And it's my opinion, and most people are saying that the latency is basically no longer an issue. It's virtually undetectable. Talking about range on these two systems, because there is quite a bit of difference here and it's something you need to be aware of. The original OcuSync system was capable of seven kilometers in FCC mode in 2.4 gigahertz and four kilometers in CE mode. In FCC mode in five gigahertz, it would do four kilometers and in CE, it would do 0.7. Now the new digital FPV system is only using the five gigahertz band. So they are stating the range again in FCC at four kilometers and in CE at 0.7 kilometers so they are comparable whilst using the same frequency however because there is only five gig on the new digital fpv system it is less overall Taking a very quick look at the OSD, there is some differences on these two systems. This is the new digital FPV system, and because it's been designed for racing applications, currently you only have voltage available via the UART telemetry. Now, DJI have been asked for more info on this, and we're hoping to get more functionality on this in the near future. However, if we compare this to the OcuSync Air system with the Goggles RE, there is a lot more info. You've got battery voltage and current at the top. You've also got horizontal speed, vertical speed, height from ground if you've got a barrow, as well as latitude and longitude if you've got GPS. Then in the center of the image you've got the ladders which allow you to see the orientation and the position of your aircraft in real time space. So it is better overall especially for fixed wing users. The last thing to mention about this new system is the remote controller. Now on the original OcuSync system you had a built-in control link but no RC and what you had to do was connect up your remote via a PPM port on the side of the goggles with a cable and it would then transfer the RC signal via the OcuSync to the digital ear end. However, DJ High this time have included an option of purchasing their additional remote controller. And this means rather than connecting your remote to the goggles, if you want to use an external remote, you can. But if you want to use DJI's, you can simply purchase the remote controller and it is all integrated with the system ready to go. There are no additional cables and it also allows full integration with the goggles as well as integration with Betaflight iNav for setting it up as well. Okay, so just to give you my final thoughts on choosing between these two systems. Now, before I do, there are links to both of these in the description of this video. Please do check them out if you'd like to support the channel and you can get your order in with the DJI store right now. Um, Choosing between the systems, there are about three fundamental decisions that you need to make which will send you down the path you need to go. The first one is head tracking. If you need head tracking, then you need to go with the Goggles RE with the OcuSync Air system because it is not available on the digital FPV. If you need the maximum possible range, then again, the OcuSync Air system with the Goggles RE is the better choice probably because it has the 2.4 gigahertz mode. In five gig, the range is identical on both systems. However, because that has the 2.4 gig mode, which allows you to use it with the RC pass-through or something like Crossfire, it means you can get up to seven kilometers range. However, I honestly think there's a lot of opportunity with the digital FPV system and different antennas to get that as close to that as possible. So actually, it, it's, it's touch and go, but fundamentally, that will be better. Um, finally, it comes down to OSD. Right now, there is only battery voltage on the Goggles Digital, whereas on the OcuSync Air system, you've got a lot more information like GPS and things like that. Those are the three decisions. Now, I do feel that the digital FPV system is going to have more OSD options soon. I really hope it's going to happen and bring it in line 
with the Ocusync system. Um, and if that does happen, it's going to muddy the water slightly. And hopefully we may also see something like Mavlink support because currently this can only be used with MSP whereas that can be used with Mavlink and MSP, which means it works with Ardrapilot as well, whereas that one doesn't currently. Um, really, it comes down to what you're going to put it in. If you're going to put it in a quad, hands down, I would go with a digital FPV system every time. If you're going to go with a long-range FPV wing, right now, the Ocusync gear system is still the better option because of the OSD options. Yes, it has more latency and it is noticeable compared to this system, but on a fixed wing, it is much less of an issue than it is on a race quad, for instance. However, if you can survive with minimal OSD, I'd still go for the digital FPV system. Really, this system is hands down better in performance. It just lacks in the OSD and the lower frequency bands. So really, FPV wing, Ocusync air system, quad, race quad, FPV or long range FPV quad, I'd always go with the digital FPV system. That's it for this video. I hope the information in it has been helpful. Again, there's links to them in the description. Finally, please do hit that subscribe button, which is in the bottom right hand corner down by here somewhere. I appreciate all the comments you guys leave for me in the description of the videos. I try to answer as many of them as I possibly can. But again, I do appreciate those who do subscribe too. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I will do another video again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much and I will do another video again soon.